Healthful, refreshing, delicious, double mint chewing gum presents for your listening pleasure, Broadway's My Beat. Broadway's My Beat, from Times Square to Columbus Circle, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway is My Beat, the thrilling drama of murder and mystery, and the people who walk the great white way, with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. <laughs> Chew delicious double mint gum often, every day, and see how much more you enjoy things. The refreshing double mint flavor makes your mouth and throat feel cool and comfortable. The smooth, easy chewing gives you a bright little lift. So at work or pleasure, indoors or out, enjoy chewing delicious double mint gum. It comes to every street, and it comes to Broadway. The single moment before the nighttime dies, when tomorrow is just a sigh away. The carnivals run down, shadows stretch toward daybreak, and the streets lean closer to tomorrow. And the solitude bleeds in from somewhere far away. And the pavements soak it up, and the darkness. And like ghosts, they walk it, the stragglers, the searchers for the open door, the pleaders for a light to be turned on. Hunger's at their heels, but Broadway's closed for the night. was, apartment house in the 60s, the silence had its own quality. Four o'clock in the morning, becoming later, between sobs, and the forgiving man. I'll not press charges, Mr. Clover. This woman's perfectly free to walk out of here and go home. As far as I'm concerned, as she doesn't... As far as I'm concerned, he says... Get her off of me! Get Come her on, break it up! Break, break it out! Did you hear what he said? Did you hear what he had nerve enough to say? Preston, you know this woman is crazy, don't you? You know I never saw her before. You sit right down there, Miss Smallwood. Go ahead, sit down. Now, stay there. I just came up here to this apartment. Just a second. Well, I want to tell you why I, I came up... just a second. Here. Is this your apartment, Miss Smallwood? No. Where do you live? Across the hall. What about you, Mr. Garrett? Where do you live? East 86, 12-12. I was... Yeah? Well... Yeah? A friend of mine lives here. Used to. Can't you make her What do you mean, quiet? used to, Miss Smallwood? Sure, Peg Miller used to live here before this man murdered her and chopped her up and put her in a trunk and shipped her to South America someplace where what? they'll never... You see what I mean? She's crazy. You want to listen to me or you want to listen to him? Make up your mind. Go ahead. <laughs> crazy. Now, you shut up, Garrett. You just let me talk, you hear? <laughs> I live across the hall. Peg Miller was my friend. This Garrett used to come here all the I time. I don't even know this lady. Now, how does she you're know all about me? You're going to let me talk or you're going to let me talk? Do you see what I mean? Go on, Miss Smallwood. This Garrett used to come here all the time. Peg told me. That's how I know. Besides, I used to see him in the hall. And Peg just one day disappeared, that's all. And tonight I heard someone in the hall at almost 4 o'clock, and there's only two apartments on this floor, and I heard someone opening Peg's door. I peeked out, and it wasn't Peg. And I got my gun. Look, the gun wasn't loaded, so what did I do that was so terrible? Go on. So I got my gun, which wasn't loaded, and I barged in here, and I stood him up against the wall... I asked him where Peg was, and I threatened to blow his brains out of his head if he didn't tell me what he did with Peg, and he started to scream like a woman. <laughs> Why don't you tell the policeman what you did when I had the gun pointed at you? Screamed, like you said, which brought the police, therefore, which served its purpose. How'd you get in here, Mr. Garrett? Well, the last time I was out with Peg, she'd given me her key to open the door. I had neglected to return it to her. Here it comes, the lies. Look, are you going to book me? Will you sign a complaint against her, Mr. Garrett? No, of course not. Well, you can go. Good night. Okay, what's your story? I'm going to be honest with you. I came up here to collect anything I might have left around. Oddments, personal things. Just in case anything ever happened to Peg, I didn't want my name linked with hers. So you just broke in well, here listen, and... Listen, let me tell you who I am. You said you were Floyd Garrett, aren't you? Oh, of course I am. And I have a pocket of identification and... Well, listen... I write a little column, country newspapers mostly, syndicated. 
uh, corny stuff that little newspapers... Well, look, I'm Mr. Mary Do. Mary Do? I write a daily column on public relations. You know, how to get along with your fellow man, good manners, uh, friendly things to do, how to patch up quarrels. And if my name ever got linked with... Yeah, Peg Miller, is that her name? That's right. She's been missing, is that right? Not missing, I wouldn't say that. Gone. Oh? Of course she's gone. She took everything I gave her, didn't she? Did she? Of course she did. A white fox stole and a watch, a $5,000 diamond watch and a lavalier... And she even took the portable radio. It was a small radio, fine for traveling. And she... Listen. Yeah? Two weeks ago, we had an argument. After I brought her home, she packed in front of me and she left. I wouldn't do anything wrong. Do I look like... Listen, I write a column on how to get along. What are you looking at? For a moment, consider him. Mr. Garrett would come to search in corners and closets and shelves for souvenirs of the life he had had up until two weeks ago. Mr. Merrydew, clean-up man, neat as a pin. Get him out of there. Outside, quick ebb of nighttime, and far away, white streak of dawn, and walk a stilling avenue that at a place uptown is intersected by another and deeper silence. Street where room is and July heat locked in. Room of the paperback book. The pot of coffee and sleep on page 137. And this room. Leave it. And at headquarters, Sergeant Gino Tartaglia has news for you. Good morning, Danny. Morning, Gino. Thank you. <clears throat> well, Danny, our day has officially begun. So let's get to work, huh, Gino? Yeah, yeah. The Department of Records, Danny. What about it? Chock full of items concerning Miss Peg Miller about whose presence or absence from our scene that riot call of last night. Chock full. Oh? The season 52-53 picked up eight times, according to my count, on various charges. Like what? In May of 52, a barroom brawl with another lady concerning a gentleman who couldn't make up his mind which lady deserved the gin fizz. Mm-hmm. In September 52, charged with tearing her apartment of the time apart in a fit of happiness, as Miss Miller explained to the desk sergeant. In November, picked up again, also true of December, January, February, etc., etc. Uh, all right, Gino, that's... Uh... Of course, Danny. <clears throat> what is interesting about the record of Miss Peg Miller, Danny, is in July of 53 of last year, it comes to a halt. For a whole year after, blank. Nothing on the blotter concerning Miss Peg Miller, which leads to a conclusion. Oh? The conclusion that this Mr. Garrett of the riot call last night took Miss Miller in hand, changed her way, made a Anything else, Gino? Perhaps another item of interest concerning Miss Peg Miller? Tell me. That every time she was booked, there was a certain Sir Galahad to go her bail. Who? Petty thief, Danny. Small-time hoodlum. Who has also made his mark on our blotters? Who? Johnny Palmer. Last known address, 1823 West 19th. Thank you, Gino. You've been helpful. You're welcome, Danny. Hey, Wash, do you take the Muggerman speaking? Get a squad car, Muggerman. Pick me up outside. Sure. You want to tell me why, Danny? On the way downtown. Right away, huh, Muggerman? Ride then through street corridors and swarm to the address of Johnny Palmer. Thief, hood, bailsman for Peg Miller. Missing woman, who by a friend was thought dead. Place of brownstone, place where questions are to be asked. Hold it a minute, huh, Danny? I'll check the mailboxes. Yeah, yeah, Johnny Palmer, 1C, first floor rear. Come on, my boy. Knocking and banging, banging and knocking. 
Stop making so much noise. Hey, wait a second. We're police. We want to talk to you. You say uh, police? Yeah, that's right. Uh, come to lock up Johnny Palmer, huh? What makes you think that? Come to put him away for the rest of his life, huh? I asked you what makes you think put that. Put him in the electric chair, maybe? Why would we want to do that? Because he's no good. Don't like him, huh? Hate him. And I'm a man gets along with everybody. Johnny just goes against your grain. He's a thief. He sneaks around. He's got no manners. Has a fishy eye. You take a chance just saying hello to him. You... Hey, here he comes now. They've come for you, Johnny. Cops have come to take you. Yeah. Why'd you have to? Come on, come on. Yeah. Better stop, Johnny. Uh, you're going to have to catch me, Calva. <laughs> and we're going to do just that. <laughs> Didn't we? Agile, for being all that law, ain't you, cop? On your feet. Put your hands out in front of you. Touch the wall. Lockerman? Uh-huh. Whatever you find shaking me down, I found in the street. Where'd you get these earrings, Johnny? I found them in the street. That's your bright answer, huh? You're going to book me anyhow. You're going to do the thing with the handcuffs anyhow. You're going to do the wrist bit. Do it, Muggerman. Uh-huh. Wrist bit. Whatever kind of work you do, I'm sure you've noticed how it's the long, dull jobs that sort of get you down. You get so bored with doing the same thing over and over. Well, next time that happens, find out what a lot of help it is to chew delicious double mint gum. You see, as soon as you stick your teeth into a stick of smooth double mint, you enjoy a feeling of real satisfaction. And you'll like the steady, natural rhythm of chewing. Delicious double mint is a long-lasting treat, too. You can chew away for as long as you like. And you have something you enjoy doing while you go on with your work. And that cool, clean double mint flavor is so refreshing, it gives you a pleasant lift. So you feel better, and things seem to go faster and easier. Yes, delicious double mint gum is a pleasant chewing treat that's helpful as well as enjoyable. So buy several packages at a time. And treat yourself to a stick at work or anywhere. That's double mint chewing gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. We now continue with Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. <laughs> Summertime, and the living is easy on Broadway, to be noted in the sandaled walk of bare-shouldered girls, and the easy gait of sailors in whites, white as snow, to be noted also in the song of the loudspeaker that wants a lazy kind of love. But the rhythms are the July rhythms, when the ball of sun spins high, summertime, beach time, rocket time, time to paint the big grin across the mouth. <laughs> And at headquarters, late morning, and Detective Muggerman and Johnny Palmer. It's beyond you, huh, fellas? You just don't understand why I offered resistance to two fine fellas like you. Yeah, why? I'm stupid. Sometimes I can be very stupid. The earrings we found on you? Want to talk to you about that? All right. If ever again you have to shake me down, use the gentle touch, the soft touch. I respond much better. Where'd you get the earrings, Johnny? You have to know? Where'd you get them? Found them. You mean heisted? Uh-uh, I mean found. You know a girl named Peg Miller? Why do you have to know? Where is she? That why you came looking for me because you wanted Peg? Yeah. I don't know where she is. Why you want her? Just looking for her. You're the logical man to ask where she is, Johnny. Why? Why? Out of a city of millions. Because out of this city of millions, you're the only man who went bail for Peg when she needed bail. Yeah, yeah, I bailed her out. Times I can't even remember. She's been reported missing, Johnny. What? Missing. You think she's dead? Is that why she's missing? What are you two fine fellas trying We're just to... trying to find out where Peg Miller is, Johnny, that's all. Yeah, but the words you use. Dead. Peggy, dead? If she's not dead, where is she, Johnny? I swear it. I'm leveling with you two fine fellas. I don't know where Peg is. A year ago, she kissed me goodbye and she said, It's good. It's been good being a soft touch to you, Johnny, baby. After that... I haven't laid eyes on her, so help Dead. You think... Yeah? They're ready in the show-up room, Danny. Thanks, Gino. 
Take him down, Muglin. Hey, fellas. Come on, Johnny. Now, now, fellas, why me? What bit do you want me for in a show-up? What do I do? You find things, Johnny. We want to show you to some people been screaming they lost things. Come on. In detail, then. Routine that weighs down the minute hand and moves it over the clock's face. The trick that takes hours to perform causes late morning to become noon, and then one o'clock causes the minor half-hour explosion known as lunch for the boys in the office. Causes it to become two o'clock. Interrogation room, Danny. We're waiting for you. Walk the corridor of headquarters now. Green painted hallway leading to this place and that. Bulletin board festooned with slogans concerning duty, concerning neatness, concerning courtesy. Suggestion box crammed full with suggestions. And notice of the third annual dance that one of Officer Adler's clubs is giving. Corridor. And the end of it. An interrogation room. With an ice pick. With an ice pick. I, I was waiting for the bus. All right, Danny. Uh, just go on, Mrs. Stubman. Uh, who's he? Don't bother about it. Just I go beg on. your pardon, but when I happen Lieutenant to Lieutenant Clover. Uh, how do you do, Lieutenant? I'm Terry Stubman. Hello. That man I saw in the... Uh, the show up? Uh, yeah, the show up. That's the fellow, or my name ain't Terry Stuckman. She means Johnny Parma, Danny. She picked him out, and uh, Mrs. Mills picked him out. Mm. Uh, Mrs. Mills got so upset at the memory of it, she just passed out. Not me. Not her. Uh, tell the lieutenant what happened. Yeah. I was waiting for the bus. It was quite late. I was all alone at midnight. When this man, this fellow, approached me, he pointed an ice pick right against my cheek. Here, mister, see? See where I'm pointing? Then this fellow walked me into an alley and removed what jewelry I was wearing. She gave me a list, Danny. What jewelry I was wearing. Together with money. Now, uh, had it not been for, uh, <clears throat> uh, well, that is, had it not been for his peculiar sense of humor and leaving me busted. That's there, about it, Danny. Uh, he mugged uh, Mrs. Stubman and robbed her, saying to Mrs. Mills, probably others. Well, thanks, Mrs. Stubman. Oh, it was quite an experience. People don't believe me to this day that thank I Thank you was... very much. I'll open the door for you. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Okay, Gino, bring him in. Let's go. And remember what I told you, Mr. Farmer. Answer the lieutenant's questions truthfully. And... Thanks, Gino. Sit down, Johnny, right there. Now, Mrs. Stubman said you held an ice pick under her eye, Johnny. How many years goes with that, fellas? What about it, Johnny? No deal, huh? No. Another dame at the show up. Mrs. Mill. Identified me too, huh? Positively. Not a doubt. Fellas. Yeah? I'm sorry for my life of crime. I'd be very happy to write out a heartfelt message to kiddies everywhere... Telling him that an ice pick should be used only as far as ice is concerned. Here, Danny, and that crime... uh, a report from Adler went over Johnny's room. We found nothing. Mm. It says here, ice pick. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it says there, ice pick. What'd you do with the stuff you stole, mugging? The knickknacks I hocked for expenses. Uh, Mrs. Mills mentions a diamond brooch worth about 500 Safe deposit box. Look, fellas... Yeah, we don't know how sorry you are. It's not that I was underprivileged, but both of my parents were drunks. They were very wealthy so they could buy all the booze they could bibble. So I never saw them except in a drunken state. Where's so... the safety deposit box, Johnny? Ruxton National. Look, fellas... Cut it out. I think I should have a psychiatrist and not a jailer. I've been through a lot. Nothing, huh? Here you are, gentlemen. Safe deposit box. Thank you, miss. Thank you very much. My, my. Look at that, Danny. Yeah. Johnny Palmer must have figured a year of rainy days. Just feel this stuff, Danny. Well, I don't... Feels good. I better feel good on my wife, too. Now, this diamond brooch, for instance. Just like Mrs. Mills said, worth half a grand in any light you look at it. Hmm. How much do you think this will be worth? Yeah, let me see. Oh, the missus looked at a watch like that once on Park Avenue. I had to drag her away by the scrub. What do you figure it's worth? The price tag on Park Avenue said 5000 That's because, the missus explained to me, it's got baguette diamonds and square-cut diamonds tastefully and beautifully arranged in a pattern. Okay. What's it say in the back, Danny? Uh, from over your shoulder, I can't see. From Floyd Garrett to Peggy Miller. The time of our love. It says that, huh? Uh-huh. 
How come it got in Johnny Palmer's piggy bank? Floyd Garrett said Peg Miller took a wither when... Uh-huh. That's what Floyd said. Let's go, Margaret. Nice of you to come and see me, Danny. This is my time of need. Wait here, Sergeant. Johnny? Mm-hmm? Time of need is right, Johnny. Look, what if I plead I'm a practical joker going slightly off base? I doubt it, Johnny. How are you going to explain away suspicion of murder? Now, wait. How are you going to explain it? Now, wait. What murder? If Peg Miller turns up dead, her murder. Why should she turn up dead? I said if. Okay, start with the if, and then show me how I killed her. You ever see this watch? Sure. How'd you get it? Peg gave it to me. Gave it to you? She wanted me to have it. Sentimental fool that I am. I took it. A lady's diamond watch. Suppose I'm hungry in a snowstorm someplace, and there's a pawn shop, and me holding this watch. I'd be in fair shape, huh? So it's a lady's watch. Lloyd Garrett said she left with this watch, and you turn up Lloyd Garrett, her boyfriend. Uh Uh-huh. I'm going to tell you about the watch. All right. She gave me the watch to pawn in case I ever needed money. A gift. On the condition, I had a rhinestone job made to replace it because Floyd boy liked to see her wrist and what he thought was his watch. Johnny, is that the truth? I just don't want a murder rap laying on me. What I told you, I swear, Danny. Look, I swear like this. It's the truth. The truth. What do you want from me? Yes? Oh, hello. Well, Mr. Garrett, this is Detective Mugovan. Hi, Mr. Mugovan. Well, uh, why don't you come in? Now, that's an invitation if I ever heard one. Uh, Mr. Garrett? Yes? Is that true what the lieutenant told me? (laughs) Well, if the lieutenant told you, I'm sure it was. But, uh, what was it? Well, that you're really Mr. Merrydew. (laughs) Yes, yes, I am. Well, uh... Well, tell me you read my column. Yeah, once I did. Uh, once in the Army, a friend of mine got a sponge cake wrapped in a Terre Haute beacon. <laughs> it was reading material for a month. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've heard of that sort of thing happening time and time again. <laughs> oh, Lieutenant. Uh-huh? I hope you don't mind. Uh, mind what? I was impressed with you. The way you handled yourself last night. Well, thanks a lot. So, I've taken the liberty. Oh, uh, what kind of liberty? Wait. Will you listen? All right. Last night, I had occasion to watch one of New York's finest... What's that for? Uh, publication. Mr. Mary doing his annual visit to Old Baghdad on the Hudson. You know, I'm going to subscribe to that Terre Haute beacon. You're kidding me. Let's talk some more about Peg Miller, Mr. Garrett. I'd rather not. Well, that's anyhow. You heard from her? Peg? Peg. No. When do you think you'll be hearing from her? Look, I'm just a columnist, not a clairvoyant. Think she's dead? How would I know? You know a man named Johnny Palmer? Johnny Palmer? Hoodlum. Right out of old Baghdad on the Hudson. You know the type. Carries guns, makes up to other fellas' girls right under their noses. What do you want from me? You sure you don't know where she is? What do you want from me? Just answer the question. You know the kind of a girl she is just as well as I do. Was? You mean she's dead? I mean she's not around anymore. The woman across the hall she's said... She's crazy, you know that. She said you killed Peg. She's crazy. You said you had an argument with her before she left. That's right. About what? You know the kind of girl she is. It's easy to have arguments with girls What was the like argument that. about? I don't remember. About money? Maybe. I, I don't remember. You treated her very nicely, didn't you, Mr. Garrett? Of course. A regular Mr. Mary do. Now, you shut up! Gave her fox tolls, a lavalier, radio. Gave her this, too. Huh? Take a look. Well, then, you found her. If you don't believe it, turn the watch over. Floyd Garrett. So you found her. Listen. Yeah? Listen. When I buried her with all that stuff, that jewelry... Yeah. You thought we figured she just took her nicest belongings in blue town? Yes. You know what she was? Oh, sure, sure. I drove her out to Long Island, out to the point, Montauk, where you found her. I thought the scenic... 
Oh, what's the use of talking? Now, go ahead and talk. All she wanted was money. All my money, all of it. Not me, not anything else. Just money, 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 money. Listen, what I did. I wish I could have written about it. You tell us. I strangled her. Drove her all the way back to Manhattan. I came up to her apartment. Got the things you found. The fur and the watch and the radio. Drove all the way back to Montauk. And buried her in the dune. How could you possibly have found that? Mr. Garrett, the watch you buried with Peg Miller was a copy. Not this watch. What? We haven't found her yet. Well, then you've tricked me? Now you're going to think terrible things about New York's finest. I... Let's go. Night leaps down on Broadway, and the crowd swarms the streets to embrace it. Laughter pours out of the shadowed places. For a time... No despair, just small shocks and sweet promises. And have a drink on me for a time, just for a time. It's Broadway, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway, my beat. Refreshing double mint chewing gum is really two treats in one. A satisfying, long-lasting chewing treat and a delicious flavor treat. That's a pleasant combination for real enjoyment and for a good many welcome helps that mean a lot when you need them. For example, when you get hungry in between meals, chew a stick of double mint and you'll find it's easier to wait until mealtime. You see, the smooth chewing is satisfying and gives you something pleasant to do. And double mint is light and agreeable, never rich or heavy. The cool, clean double mint flavor freshens your taste and sweetens your breath, too. Yes, delicious double mint gum gives you a good deal of enjoyment and many pleasant helps, all at a mighty low cost. So try it soon, at work or pleasure, indoors or out. Enjoy delicious double mint chewing gum. Costs so little, tastes so good, lasts so long. Makers of Double Mint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's story and that you are enjoying delicious Double Mint Gum every day. We invite you to join us again next week at this same time when Detective Danny Clover returns again with Broadway's My Beat. Broadway's My Beat, brought to you by Double Mint Chewing Gum, is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. The program is written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin and stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover, with Charles Calvert as Tartaglia and Jack Crucian as Mugovan. In tonight's story, Jack Edwards was heard as Floyd and Jerry Hausner as Johnny. Featured in the cast were Charlotte Lawrence, Martha Wentworth, and Junius Matthews. Bill Anders speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.